Hey everybody, this is my smallmouth bass, and that's my Mayan cichlid. He can get on out of the uh, shot there, because we're not going to talk about the Mayan cichlid. There we go. Uh, the smallmouth bass here is the fish we are going to be concerned about in this video. It is a predatory fish, and it needs either a crayfish or other fish or some sort of prey to feed on. Uh, I've said already several times I really don't know how long I'm going to keep this in the tank, but for now it's in the tank, and since it's in there, I, you know, I kind of have the responsibility of making sure it gets fed. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more minnows for this fish. We're going to go down the stream again. I threw my minnow trap out about an hour ago, I suppose. Uh, I'm not really worried about collecting a lot of minnows. I only need three or four of them to be in there, maybe even two, one or two. It doesn't matter. As long as I get something to put in this tank that this fish here can use for prey, we'll be fine. That's my only goal is to catch enough fish to feed this guy tonight. So we're going to go ahead and head on down to uh, the stream down the street and check the minnow trap when I threw it in. Uh, there was a bunch of minnows swimming around that were fairly good size. I'm not sure what they were, but there was a lot of them there. And I'm actually kind of excited to see what we're going to catch tonight. I didn't have any of my normal uh, bait, so I used a little bit of rosemary and olive oil artisan bread. So who knows, we might catch some fancy fish while we're down there. At any rate, let's get down there and see what's in the trap. All right, everybody, I came down here already and there was no fish at all in the minnow trap so i ran back home i got my waterproof socks on and we're gonna try to just snag a couple of minnows out of the channel here shouldn't be too difficult i only need one or two just something to put in there for food the trick is going to be finding them first because i don't see any It's almost 7.30 in the evening. The sun's going to be going down here pretty soon. So let's walk around this way and see if we can't find any. It's interesting, a little while ago this evening when I came down and threw the trap out, there was tons of minnows here. I wonder if they've all gone downstream or something. I suppose we could always try looking in one of these little pools over here. There's always a possibility there'll be some minnows swimming in here. Oh, there's a few. I uh, don't know if I'll be able to do anything with them or not. Let's leave them alone for the time being. I think it looks like somebody's been down here playing, making little channels and currents in the stream. I don't know if we're going to find any more good pools any further down. Uh, there might be a few swimming around over here. We can give that a shot. Maybe we should have just tried the pool we first stopped at. I at least saw some in there. No, I don't think we're going to have any better luck any further downstream.
All right, let's see if we can't find something over here after all. Oh, there's a bunch of little ones down there. Let's see if we can scare them downstream. Mm, we got one. This is one of those little fish. I never know whether this is a darter or a sculpin. Well, we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the bucket anyway. Sometimes I can just do a random swipe through here and come out with some fish. But not today, because I don't even see any fish out here. Alright, let's go across the street. I can see lots of little fish swimming around here, but there's none in a dense enough school for me to be able to actually pick any up. <clears throat> Nothing. I should be able to make some random passes through here and pull some out. But apparently not. several little groups of these fish swimming around out here hopefully we'll be able to pull something out there's a ton of them down here in this little low-lying area all I need is a couple there's one well that's like one of those Another one of those weird little bottom fish. Well, that one just got away, so that's all right. That's not what I'm after anyway. I'm after actual dinner for the bass. There we go, that's a little more like it. Two more. There's some nice big rosy side dace. Loving them. A 
couple more. Almost seems a shame they're going to get eaten. And we'll try one or two more little passes real quick here. There's a little crayfish. Didn't get him. Found a nice big rock. And there's a couple more. All right, everybody, I had to walk all the way upstream to get to that hole, but we got them, so we're heading back to the truck now. All right, everybody, while we're driving back home, I want to point out before we left I filled the bucket with some water from the house and I put some salt in it I didn't use the marine salts and make it into like a brackish solution like I did before I simply added uh, aquarium salt sodium chloride and I put in probably the equivalent of about three or four tablespoons per gallon uh, it's well over the threshold the taste threshold I could you know uh, I did a little dip test and tasted it and it was very very salty it was well beyond what I would think of as brackish water but keep in mind brackish water is made with marine salts not sodium chloride so this was still a very intensive salt dip that they're getting right now but it was not the brackish water dip they're simply getting uh, some sodium chloride right now so by the time I get inside and get them downstairs and so on and so forth they will have had a good 10 minutes in this nice uh, salt dip so I will see you there all right everybody here we are I can tell you that smallmouth knows the routine already he's already figured out what's going on and he is waiting so I'm gonna try pouring them in sort of towards the middle of the tank a little bit I'm gonna do it all at once Just in hopes that some of them might escape. Well, he got one. So these are all slightly larger than the ones I put in before. But the ones I put in before, he went around just gobbling them up. Now, I didn't actually catch that. I think he might have just spit that one that he'd swallowed out. Although I do see uh, scales coming out of his gills. So maybe he didn't spit it out. I'm not sure. But it looks like he just got another one. He always darts behind the branches, and I can never see what's going on. I can't tell whether he's actually getting these or not. So hopefully this won't be too much more of a routine for too much longer anyway. I really don't want an aggressive tank. I really don't want a tank full of, you know, predatory fish or piscivores, fish that are going to need other feeder fish. Um, it's just not my kind of tank. I like a nice community tank where everybody gets along. But as I said, I've got this bass in here now. I put it in there. Um, you know, I've taken the responsibility of caring for it. And since I have, this is what you got to do to care for it. This is the kind of fish this is. So hopefully within the coming week or so, I'll have gotten my fill of studying this bass and seeing it swim around, and we'll go ahead and get it out of the tank, and then we can move on uh, to the next phase of what this tank is going to be. And I'm hoping very soon here we can start moving into a more um, permanent phase of what this tank is going to look like. As I said, I've got some ideas of what I want to do with this tank in the long run. Uh, that would become a permanent tank rather than having all these fish coming and going and catching fish and releasing fish and all that. I really do want to establish a community in this tank and have it stay that way. And in order to do that, it's just going to take a little bit of time and it's going to take a great deal of thought and preparation to make sure I'm getting the proper fish. Uh, I can already tell you, just to throw one little for example out there, uh, some of the fish that I thought that I decided on and I thought would be great fish for this tank 
uh, after doing a little more research, like 72 or 74 degrees is about the upper limit of what they can tolerate, and even that's only for a short period of time. Um, they really need to be down in the mid-60s to be comfortable. And I need fish that are going to be able to tolerate, you know, 80 degrees because my basement gets warm and I've got other fish tanks around here and it just, you know, the hot lights, these tanks just get up to about 80 degrees. So I'm going to have to keep not only fish that will get along, will fit in the tank, can tolerate my water, but can also tolerate those warmer temperatures. So i got a lot of different parameters I need to consider when I'm thinking about a long-term, you know, stocking community in this tank. Well, he is determined to stay hidden behind those branches back there. There he is. So, at any rate, I'm going to call that the end of this video. Uh, I've got some other stuff I need to tend to, so I would ask you to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, that way you won't miss any of the stuff I'm talking about. we got lots of stuff coming up on this tank in the future. Uh, and then, of course, I've got all my other tanks, and, you know, who knows what's going on with those tanks at the moment. So, thanks for watching this one. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget this one is my native tank. And I'll see you real soon in the next one.